Hey, hey guys, it's that time once again, just a week later where I bring you yet another tremendous best team. I'm doing things a little differently than the last few years, as I decided before we get into alternate starters, we should go ahead and put together a best team that doesn't have any older Pokemon on it. I'll pull back the curtain a little bit. I'm actually putting this video together before the original best team even comes out. So I can assure you right now, no Gardevoir today. I'm sure I'll be enjoying the comments of those who are so against the original waifu mod. But for now, let's just settle in and enjoy a best team composed of a bunch of Pokemon that weren't on the original best team, and are only found in Paldea. Before we start though, you guys should head over to Mystic Umbreon Shorts. We have a brand new exclusive series over there where I take a Pokemon and see how well it performs in a Scarlet and Violet playthrough. Today, Armor Rogue is up. Also, if you like anime and fanfics, head over to Mystic Reads, where I'm currently reading Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, an adventure with Ash and Serena going through Kanto together. If you like anime, I'm reading through the Yaju Sanin, a Naruto fanfic. I will leave the links for both of these channels and the Armor Rogue video in the description below and I card above. So I guess I instantly sort of lied. It's not an entire team of Pokemon that wasn't on the original, as I figured bringing back Skeledurge would serve us all very well. The simple point is this, there is a lot to be gained from Skeledurge's fire and ghost typings, especially when they're wrapped up in a base 110 special attacking package. It's no Chandelure in that department, but it doesn't have to be. It's incredible to have access to something like this guy so easily. As your starter, you'll of course be ending up with Skeledurge by level 36, so enjoy the time with Fuecoco and Crocolar while you can. This is probably the last time I'll get to talk about Skeledurge in a best team context for a long while, so for my fellow fans of this croc, enjoy it. There isn't any difference here from its original moveset. I still feel pretty confident with this one. We've got Torchsung, Shadow Ball, Earth Power, and Flamethrower. Torchsung is learned upon evolution, and that's a pretty powerful stab to learn right there, which boosts Skeledurge's special attack stat when it hits. Next up, you'll be learning Shadow Ball at level 38. Though, as I'd suggested prior, a later game combo of Will-O-Wisp and Hex can be an attractive way to go about things as well. Then, with Earth Power, that will be learned via a TM. You'll have to either find it in one of several areas, including the Asado Desert, or make it with Silicobra Sand, Shallow Smucus, and Barboat Slime after you've unlocked the recipe from beating Team Airy Star. Finally, the set closes out with Flamethrower, and that is learned at level 32. I'm curious to see what you guys said on the original best teams to perhaps improve this moveset, but I still think Skeledurge was screwed over when it comes to a move pull. Maybe that'll change one day. I'm sure there were some of you on the original team who were surprised not to see this guy, but don't worry, he's here now. The adorable and dopey Clodzire gets its chance here on this team right now. Honestly, it had come down to using it or Gastrodon on the base best team, but it just barely missed out. So to everyone else who loves Clodzire, rejoice. Paldean Wooper is one of the earliest Pokemon you can find in the game and will evolve into Clodzire at level 20, which is also a very early evolution, making this even more worth using. It's incredibly specially bulky and a decent attacker, but having that bulk puts it in a position where it can easily heal with Water Absorb and tank most other moves while hitting with its nice physical attacks. Speaking of, Clodzire's set is gonna be Poison Jab, Earthquake, Megahorn, and Zen Headbutt. So not only does this thing look very silly, it's also packing a pretty strong moveset. Who would have thought? It will learn Poison Jab via level up at level 24. So on top of being an early evolution from Wooper, it also gets a strong move early too. That's nothing short of impressive, folks. It'll learn Earthquake either at level 48 or by using a TM. That TM can be gotten from the league rep in the Asado Desert. Very simple. Then, with Megahorn, that will be learned at level 36, and that's some nice bit of coverage. I remember being very surprised that Clodzire could learn this. Who would have thought a bunch of spines would shoot out of its back? Oh, wait, it's actually called the Spiny Fish Pokemon. Oh well. Anyway, with Zen Headbutt, you'll learn that via TM, which you can find on a cliff near the Water Gym in Kaskarafa City or after beating Atticus. You can craft the TM with Veluza Filet, Drafferig Fur, and Dunsparce skills. So I feel like we have to include one of new flying types in this region since we avoided that last time. And I definitely have my eyes on Flamigo. I said you should use this thing and I wasn't kidding. It's another encounter you can find before heading to the school at the start of the game and it packs a great punch for an early game Pokemon. Base 115 attack and 90 speed. 
Basically, if you get this thing early and decide to use it, it can easily stay on your team for the entirety of the game, especially with some of the earlier challenges like Cloth and the battles with Katie and Brasius. Honestly, this team feels like it's quickly turning into the popular runners-up team, but that's all right. These Pokemon deserve a spotlight too. Now, onto the moveset. Acrobatics, Close Combat, Liquidation, and Throat Chop are our Flamigo moves today. And can you ask for much more in the world of coverage? The usage of Acrobatics is always perfect for an in-game playthrough, since no items are being held usually. And you'll teach it that with the TM. It's found near Casa Royal Lake and in the East Province Area 3. But the best way to still get it is to beat Mela for the recipe and then make it with Watchroll and Bombardier Feathers. You'll have to use a TM for close combat as well, and the only way to get that TM is to beat Team Star's Aerie in that challenge. You can always run some other fighting moves until then if you need to get your team more together before you take her on. Then, with Liquidation, you'll need a TM for that too and it'll be found on Glaciado Mountain or in North Province Area 3. You'll also get the recipe after beating Eri, and it calls for Boiselfur, Aracuda Scales, and Wiglet Sand. Finally, Throat Chop is learned all the way at level 48, which is gonna take some time to get, of course, but at least Payback is in this thing's move pool too, so we've got some options while we wait to learn that move. So, I guess we've reached the part of the team where I've got to admit maybe I was wrong. I had predicted long ago that I thought Cloth would end up on a worse team, but it turns out it wasn't as bad as I had first thought. I know, I know. Mystic, you already said that in your opinions on all the new Pokemon video. Well, I feel I really did Cloth so dirty before that I may as well say it again. I don't care for your design, but you're more than deserving of being here, dude. Its stat boasts 100 in attack and 115 in defense, and perhaps most shockingly is its decent 75 base speed. I thought for sure this thing would be slow as dirt, but I was wrong again there. As for where you get it, there's plenty near where you face the Titan in South Province Area 3. Now, before I have to say I was wrong again, let me just get into its moves. Alright, so I had to eat crow with this guy, but don't think I ended up giving it a bad move set or anything to mess around with. It's got Stone Edge, Brick Break, Shadow Claw, and Trailblaze. Pretty nice coverage up in here. We're gonna lead off with Stone Edge, learned via TM, obtained in North Province Area 1 at the Pokemon Center from the Battle League rep. And its recipe calls for Rock Rough Rock, Roly Coly Coal, and Cloth Claw. Then, with Brick Break, there's more TM action here. You'll unlock the recipe after knocking off Atticus. And it calls for Makuhita Sweat, Halucha Down, and Crab Brawler Shell. The TM can also be found in the North Paldean Sea and north of the Asado Desert. The next one up is Shadow Claw, which, well, is another TM. That's really the whole moveset, honestly. It's another TM you can craft after beating Atticus with Mimikyu Scrap and Komala Claw. The fixed locations are West Province Area 1 and East Province Area 3 for those keeping count here. Finally, with Trailblaze, that's the earliest of them all. Just beat Brasius and you have it in your possession. Now, if you thought this best team wasn't going to be featuring weird Pokemon, you're very wrong. I have elected to choose Rapska to this team, and getting it can be bizarre. First off, you need a Raylor, and those roll around their weird balls in the Asado Desert. Then, you need to use that all-new Let's Go feature to have your Raylor walk 1,000 steps. And when it does, you'll just need to level it up and you'll have Rapska. I was surprised by how good Rapska actually was, because while slow, its special stats and even its physical defense are all rather competent. It's a weirdo Pokemon, but if its potential origin of being based on an Egyptian god is to be believed, I like it. So let's see this moveset. We've got Revival Blessing, Bug Buzz, Psychic, and Dazzling Gleam on Rapska here today. Revival Blessing is learned upon your convoluted evolution. It's a move that has 1 PP and will revive any Pokemon on your team with half of its HP. I figured this was a move that could come in handy at some point, especially if you've forgotten to stock up on items before an important battle. If you'd like an alternative move if you don't believe in the usefulness of Revival Blessing, you can go ahead and use Energy Ball, I suppose. It's a TM found just north of the Team Star Fairy Base. Bug Buzz comes at level 45 and Psychic at level 50. But there's a few other bug and psychic moves to run until then, even if it is lacking a little on the bug side for special things. Finally, with Dazzling Gleam, that TM is given to you for knocking off Ortega. Easy enough, right? Alright, so we're gonna close out today's team with a very special Pokemon. 
Dondozo is a very interesting water type added into the world of Pokemon, as it's sort of like a cross between Whiskash and Wailord. The main problem that we would normally face in wanting to use Dondozo is that it's only available at a very high level, and under previous circumstances, perhaps too out of the way to justify using it in a playthrough. Game Freak, however, changed a classic mechanic just enough to help us out here. So this is what we're going to do. We'll be catching a Dondozo, and it probably won't be too easy without a few gym badges. Its level will be in the 50s, so prepare to use a ton of Pokeballs and the like. When you catch one, you'll want to, of course, breed it. You can find Ditto in West Area Province 2 and 3, and then it becomes as easy as starting a picnic and getting your level 1 Dondozo. That's right, we're breeding ourselves a Dondozo to let it fit in on a best team. I love it. Its 150 base HP and 115 defense will make it the bulkiest mon on the team, and the 100 base attack is great too. Naturally though, this thing is slow, and a lot of this team is slow. But thankfully, there's enough bulk to make up for it. So now that you know how we're getting this massive dude, we should go over the moves. We've got Aqua Tail, Avalanche, Body Press, and Order Up, providing the last little bits of coverage we were looking for. So Aqua Tail is learned at level 40, but with a few different water type moves learned via level up and TM, should be able to fill in the blanks until then. Then we've got Avalanche, and remember, this dude is slow as hell, so I'm not screwing anything up here by giving it Avalanche. You can get the TM by way of crafting, and that recipe is a reward for knocking off Mela. It'll cost you Snowrunt Fur and Bergmite Ice. As for Body Press, that's a pretty good one with the defense stat Dondozo carries. The TM for it is found either in the middle of the East Province Area 3 or in North Province Area 3. You can also craft it after beating Aerie. You need Ponyard Blades, Halucha Down, and Satadal Grease for that. Finally, Order Up is just learned at level 50, and it still does some good damage whether Tatsugiri is around or not. Alright, so once again, we're going to marathon through the important battles. Let's do it. The Titans are handled as follows. Cloth by Dondozo or Clodzire, Bombardier by your Dondonzo or Cloth, Orthworm by your Skeledurge, Iron Treads or Great Tusk by Skeledurge for one, and Robska and Dondozo for the other. And finally, the Dondozo is going to take some work from everyone, and the Tatsugiri should be no problem for your own Dondozo. That's the one battle where it's just going to take a general group effort to beat them down. No single Pokemon. Then you'll battle Arvin and use Flamigo against Greedent, Toadscroll, and Scovillain. And then the other half of the team is, quite frankly, an easy game for Dondozo, as its Body Press and Aqua Tail will take the rest out. Arvin is no problemo for the squad. Then with the Team Star leaders, I'll keep this brief. We have Clodzire for Ortega and the Fairy types, Dondozer for Mela and her Fire types, Flamigo and Rapska for Ares Fighting types, Clodzire and Rapska for Atticus and the Poison types, and finally Flamigo and Cloth for those Dark types Giacomo uses. That's when you go up against Penny. You can have Flamigo go up against Umbreon, Dondozo versus Flareon, Clodzire can handle Jolteon, Sylveon, and Leafeon, or you can leave the latter for Skeledurge. And then Vaporeon, you can just toss a bunch of different Pokemon at it, headed by Cloth using Trailblaze, or Robska's Energy Ball if you chose to use it over Revival Blessing. Now with the Gym Challenge, it's Skeledurge for Katie and Brasius, Clodzire for Iono. For Kofu, you'll have to use Cloth's Trailblaze or Robska's Potential Energy Ball, and support from the rest of the team since I didn't lean too much in the Grass and Electric type moves of this lineup today. Flamigo for Larry, Cloth and Skeledurge for Rhyme, Skeledurge for Cloth again against Tulip, and finally Cloth can put up the best fight against Grusha since it doesn't carry any ice weakness and can pretty much just stone edge away with support from Flamigo and Dodonzo's fighting type moves as well as of course Skeledurge and the fire moves. When you battle the Elite Four, you can tackle Rika's ground types with Dodonzo mostly, but also have some Clodzire on Clodzire battling and Cloth against Whiskash. The battle with Poppy puts Skeledurge at the forefront once more since she uses Steel types. And then against Larry, you'll be able to use Cloth's Rock type moves some more and Dodonzo's Avalanche as well. Your final Elite Four battle against Hassel will see Order Up and Avalanche called upon by Dondozo plenty, and Rapska's Dazzling Gleam as well. Honestly, the gym challenge part of things seems to be where Rapska comes through as nothing more than support usually, but that's no big deal. Finally, you'll do battle with Grita, and her Espathra really shouldn't be too much for Rapska to defeat, and honestly her Go-Goat is easily handled by it as well. 
Veluza can easily be beaten by Ropska too. So I guess I spoke too soon about this creepy dung beetle thing. Avalug can easily be taken down by Skeledurge, as can King Gambit. But if you're not feeling frisky, you can have Flamigo crack it with a close combat. Finally, let Claude Zire Earthquake that Glamora, and you're the next champion of Paldea. What reward do you get? Well, a battle with Nimona, of course. She's pretty easy, as her Lycanroc, Gudra, and Dunsparce are handled by Dondozo. And her Orthworm, Pama, and Meowskarata are all pretty much victims of Claude Zire and a Skeledurge combo. I wish she'd be more of a challenge, but it is what it is. Lastly, your battle with Sada or Turo takes the stage. Sada's Slitherwing and Brute Bonnet are both easy for Flamigo to beat. Fluttermane is a Shadow Claw away from being knocked out. Skeledurge can probably beat Screaming Tail with just its ghost type moves. Sandy Shocks will be miserable against Clodzire. And then finally, Roaring Moon could be hurt massively by Dazzling Gleam by Ropska. But you may need to use more than just that one little bug. The battle with Turo is more of the same. Iron Moth, Hands, and Thorns all go down to Earthquake. Iron Bundle is close combat fodder. Iron Jugulus can be shoved by Dazzling Gleam. And finally, Iron Valiant is a victim of Acrobatics or Psychic. Take your pick there. But with that, we've got everything very covered. So that is it. This is the best team for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet using only new Pokemon, while also not repeating any from the main best team. So I guess calling it New Pokemon Edition is true in two different ways. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and are looking forward to the alternate starters. And don't worry, there won't be an Empoleon, Infernape, and Torterra edition this time around. I promise. But with that, I'll see you guys around for the next best team, and thanks again for watching. Thanks for watching the video and for coming through and enjoying Scarlet and Violet with me. We've got so much content coming surrounding Gen 9 through the end of the year and beyond, including the top 10 strongest Pokemon, the best team for the games, and much more. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. When we get to 5,000 subs on the channel, we're going to have a new series related to Scarlet and Violet that will be exclusive to there, so go subscribe. Also, if you're into fan fictions or Genshin Impact, check out Mystic Reads and Tevotionary. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content over there, and I do a bunch of theories and lore videos surrounding Genshin Impact. So come join me over there at that Fulcher boat. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time for more Scarlet and Violet content.